Maybe you might not want to face him up there. So I'll put another act in your place and you sort of take it easy, huh? That's not necessary, Cap. It's been five years. They've probably forgotten about it anyway. You've got something else on your mind, haven't you? It's about your father, Betty. What about him? He's broken jail. No, he's still out. Happened about a week ago. I read it in the Prairie City paper. I'm sorry, darling, but you have to know it sometime. I'm sorry, too. You should have done it, Cap. Well, there's no use worrying about that now. But you see what I meant when I said about taking the day off tomorrow? Might be a little embarrassing. Embarrassing? Why should it be? Well, the lab will have a little hard feeling about you up there, on account of your father, I mean. And I just sort of figured That's that... That's all the more reason I should face them, Cap. We've got nothing to be ashamed of. You think I'd let you down? Well, as a matter of fact, Betty, what you're doing is exactly what I expected you to do. Now, you go and hit the hay, old trooper. Yes, sir. You look worried. Maybe I am, a little. Have you ever been in Prairie City? No, this is my first trip. You're gonna have to show me around. I sort of dread strange places. I think I know what you mean. I dread it too. But I thought you knew the place. That's just the trouble. I do. <laughs> Get your tickets here for the greatest show that ever hits Prairie City. 
It's just about to start, folks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Get your tickets here. Just a minute, gentlemen. Get your tickets here. Official business. Take over, Lou. All right, Cap. All right, folks. Step right up and get your You seen tickets. anything? Not yet, Sheriff. I know everybody that's come aboard so far. I still don't think he'd risk coming up here. It's a sucker move. Weston's no sucker. He's sharp. He figures he'll be safer in the crowd than trying to make it alone. I know that guy. Well, keep your eyes open, boys. All right, sir. Step right along, please. There's plenty of tickets and plenty of room. Thank you, sir. All right, lady, how many? cried so when I left her, it broke her loving heart. And if we ever meet again, we'll never, never part. She's the rose of rarest beauty this fellow ever knew. Her eyes are bright as diamonds, they sparkle like the dew. You may sing of other pretty gals from Maine to Tennessee. But the yellow rose of Texas is the only rose for me. There's a cowboy back in Texas who said he would be true. I knew you were from Texas. Please tell me how you knew. The way you smile reminds me of the one I used to know. There's a many a rose in Texas if you're looking where they grow. There's a cowboy back in Texas. Well, he's really just a friend. He lives down by the Rio where the river makes a bend. Well, you know, my rose of Texas lives across on the other shore. So as long as they're together, we won't see them anymore. He's a rose of rarity, this fellow ever knew. Her eyes are bright as diamonds. Sheriff, you wanted to see me? I'd like to ask you a few questions. When did you hear from your father last? Well, about a month ago he wrote me a letter. But I think I know what you want me to say. But, uh, you tell us. That I know where he is. I'm sorry, Sheriff, but he didn't let me in on his plans. Uh, you were figuring on seeing him, weren't you? Absolutely not. There's no particular reason you should tell us if you didn't know. In that case, Sheriff, why do you bother to ask? Just a minute, young lady. If you know what's good for you, if you want to save yourself in trouble, you talk. And talk fast. Simmer down, mister. You're getting out of line fast. You too, cowboy. Suppose you mind your own affairs. 
How do you know this isn't my affair? Please, Roy, I can handle it. Oh, that's an idea. I'll beat it. Do you mind? I'd like to talk to the sheriff alone. You better stay here, boss. Long distance, please. I'd like to place a call to Mr. John Ellis, National Insurance Company in Dallas. Hello, Roy. How are you doing? Did you contact the girl? Yes, sir. I got a job on the showboat as an entertainer. I have a hunch she doesn't know anything about the missing money, though. Well, I hope your hunch is wrong, Roy. But handle it your own way. Stick close to her. I still say that she and her father will try to get together. Right. Mister? I could be. Why? Nothing. Only it might be a good idea. As a matter of fact, I make a you leave town right away. And I second it. You wouldn't want to get that nice shirt all dirty. It's too pretty. Well, I'm glad you like it. But don't worry about it getting dirty. I have to take things to the cleaners every once in a while. I like your scarf, too. That's a little uneven. Hey, Bouncer! Bouncer! Back down! Throw these fellas out of here. With pleasure, boss. Roy! Buster! You old son of a gun! How you been? Well, how you been? I said throw him out. You mean Roy, Mr. Gorse? I can't do that. He's my pal. I haven't seen him in years. What's that to do with it? You're fired. Come on, baby. Keeping you busy? Sure, on the move every minute. Take us, heal a bend, rodeo or two, round up. All the usual top cluster. It's a great life. Sure is. Just a minute. Yes. Hey! What? Hey! 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 Nice of you fellas pitching in and helping me like that. Uh, oh, no problem at all. We couldn't stand by and see one fellow gang up on like that. Oh, no I guess we better go in and see if the boss is back yet, huh? Yeah, about our job. Job? Sure. Yeah, they sent for us to play and sing in here. Oh, oh musicians, huh? <laughs> you fellas ain't got any job. That was the boss Roy and I slugged. Oh, that we don't oh, forget about What it. do we do now? Well, we might as well hightail it back over the ridge where we came from. Hey, maybe Roy can get you a job in a showboat. How about it, Roy? All of them? Yeah, well, we're yeah, well, 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 wait a minute, fellas. I don't own the boat. I'd like to. Oh, wait. come on, Roy. We can't let them down. Where's your instruments? Why, well, at the express office where we ship them, I guess. Well, come on, let's go. Wait a minute. Where's Shub? Shub? Yeah. Say, you don't suppose he... Hey! Oh, boy! Oh, Take that thing. Thing. Hey, uh, get him out of there. Ah, get it off him. Hey. Hey, um, Bob, help me here. Somebody get down here. Let's go get the instruments. Hey!
Uh, we're the sons of the pioneers. We came after our entrance. Yeah, that'll be 480. Pay him, Shug. Pay him, Shug. Our banker. Pay him. Oh, beat yourself to death. Hey, now, wait a minute. Don't tell me you lost all our dough in that fight. I sure did. It's gone. Still 480. That's all right, fella. I'll stick it. <laughs> oh, remember, now, this, this is just a loan. We'll pay you back. Okay, pick him up, boys. Wait a minute, fellas. How about getting your instruments out and playing us a tune? We want to see how good you are. You mean right here? Sure. Well, all right, boy. I'm coming. Home. I've been away, but there'll come a day, so darling, don't you cry. I'm coming. Here home. comes your rover coming home. I'm coming. Howdy, Cap. Hey, what sort of a pitch do you call this? Pretty good, huh? Oh, Back to the open range and rope and one little gal I knew. Back to the wave and sage and save and all my love for you. Open the so folks, just another attraction of the showboat Yellow Rose of Texas. Huh, Cap? Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm coming home. I've got a yearning home fire's burning. Darling, don't you cry. I'm coming home. Here comes your older coming home. I'm coming home. I see the light of your eyes so bright and I see a clear blue sky. I'm coming home. Here comes your older coming home. I'm coming home. Out of the storm cloud into a warm cloud, climbing each step to you. I'm coming home. Watching the rainbow down by the lane go climbing to heaven too. I'm coming home. One little mile more. Save me a smile, boy. You two kids better top this number. Those boys are plenty all right, and I know talent gonna see it. You certainly do, Cap. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm coming No, don't bother. Betty, Roy, they want an encore. What's the matter, now? Cap, I can't go on now. Roy, will you excuse us a minute? I want to talk to Cap. Uh, Roy, send on the next number, will you? All right. Just going to. Well, never mind. Come on. Sure has grown up. Dad, are you all right? Don't worry about me.
drop it, Wes. This is quite a surprise, Betty. But not a pleasant one. Who is he? A policeman. Next time, I'll be more careful making friends. I suppose you think I planned all this. It doesn't matter much now, does it? Ready, Weston? Take the gun, Betty. Now get around there, mister. And keep your hands up. That's all, brother. Drop it. You dropped your gun, mister. Why, you little squirt. Need your wagon, mister. Shall we get started? No, you're making a mistake. Well, I don't think so. He's the one who made the mistake, breaking jail and before that stealing a payroll. But he didn't steal it. You don't believe that, do you? Why should I? Ah, uh, the way I'm Betty. All this guy is interested in is collecting the reward. Say, you're not a regular copper, are you? No, I'm from the insurance company. But I still have to uphold the law. And after that, I'll expect you to tell me what you did with the money. Which I haven't gotten, which I never saw. All Dad wants is to prove his innocence. They framed him. Honestly, they did. Well, that's not for me to judge. Well, at least you can listen, Roy. It can't do any harm. Young fella, we're both looking for the same thing, only for different reasons. If you turn me in, you lose the money, and I lose the last chance to clear myself. And if I listen to your story, what happens then? You might change your mind and give us both a break. Your game? All right, Buster. Put down the gun. Make yourself comfortable, Weston. And make the story good. Go ahead. Thank you, Mark. Well, it all started five years ago, right here in Prairie City. Betty and I were strangers. Our idea was to buy a ranch, but needing a little money, I got a job driving for the express company. It was my first night on the job. We had to run a payroll shipment up to the Hollister mine. The express agent sealed the box and turned it over to me and the regular driver, a chap named Charlie Goss. He owns the Club Ace here now. Between us, we carried the box out to the buckboard. Being new on the job, I suggested Goss drive and let me ride guard behind. But for some reason or other, he didn't like the idea. I ain't supposed to. Your job was to drive. So we changed places. What's the difference? Well, none. I mean, I hired out as guard. Well, you know the road, Goss. I don't. It'll save time. All right, but stick close. It was rough going right from the start. I was running about 20 feet behind the wagon when it happened. Goss fell to the ground unconscious. under me, the wagon gone with the payroll, and Charlie Goss slugged in the back. Right after that, the sheriff picked me up. Yeah, they gave me a trial all right, but when Goss testified that I shot him and said I insisted on riding behind, the jury lost no time in hanging the blame on me. Now I'll tell you who I think did it. I'm way ahead of you, Weston. You think Goss had a hand in it, don't you? Well, who else? I'll admit he didn't rig it right or he wouldn't have got shot himself. That slug was intended for me. Somebody was working with him, but that somebody got his signals mixed. They counted on killing me, framing it as a holdup, and then splitting up the money later. But I got a hunch it didn't work out that way. Not with Goss shot, and the other fellow gone, and the team running away with the money. What do you think happened to that box, Weston? 
That's exactly what Dad's been trying to find out, Roy. If he could find that box, it would clear him. Nobody ever found that box. It's around here somewhere. I don't want to give up now, Rogers. I've got to find it. That's a pretty big order, isn't it? Not so easy to think. A couple of weeks ago, Pete here found a piece of the buckboard in the canyon about five miles from the place we were held up. It's true, Roy. Dad wouldn't have broken out of prison if he hadn't had at least a clue. Won't you help us? All I need is 48 hours. Suppose I make you a proposition, Weston. You said I need that box as badly as you do. And you're right. If I help you find it, are you willing to remain in my custody and at the end of 48 hours give yourself up? You mean whether we find it or not? Win or lose. If the posse tracks you down ahead of time, I'll have to surrender. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. That's a fair proposition, young fella. Then it's settled. We can leave tonight and start looking by morning. I know a few fellows will give us a hand, too. You won't regret it, boy. I hope you're right, Betty. Ain't found a thing. The sheriff's coming. The sheriff? Yeah, he and his men. I had to come across the ridge to get here first. You going to surrender me, Rogers? Well, that was our bargain, but don't jump the gun. We'll see what he wants first. Betty, you better stay here with your father. Come on, Buster. Come on, Buster. You looking for somebody, Sheriff? Yeah. And don't try to tell me he ain't around here, either. Come on, boys, we'll search this canyon. Before you go ahead with this, I'd like to have a few words with you. Don't trust them. They're stalling. It's no use, Buster. Somebody must have tipped them off. What are you covering up for? Where did he go? I can't answer that. We're wasting time. They're all in it together. All right, scatter out, men, and bring him in. He didn't break his word, Roy. So he just couldn't let them catch him now. Where is he? He's going to meet us at Pete's cabin. He promised. Don't you believe that? I don't know what to believe. I can't understand what's happened. Get my horse, will you? Well, it's pretty plain to me what happened. Your dad grabbed the first chance he had to run out on me. I think you're jumping to conclusions. Have you any suggestions? Only that you wait and find out what actually did take place. I think we already know that. Your dad agreed to meet us here. Well, we've waited three hours and he hasn't shown up yet. So you think he let you down? I certainly do. It's at times like these I get awfully lonesome for those hills we were talking about. Remember? All set, Roy. Well, where do you think you're going? I'm checking out, Cap. Oh, now take it easy, Roy. I want to have a little talk with you. Betty told me the whole story. And if you knew that kid like I know her, you wouldn't make such a darn fool of yourself. 
I'm afraid if anybody made a fool out of me, it was Betty and her dad. I think you're wrong. The point is, I wasn't crazy about having to come here in the first place. It just happened to be my job. Looks like my job's done. You won't change your mind? No. convinced he was telling the truth. Him taking those pot shots at me this afternoon ought to convince you otherwise, does it? <laughs> well, let's just say I was following the wrong trail. There's just one thing that puzzles me, Sheriff. How did you know that we had Weston down there in the canyon with us this morning? Got a tip. Somebody tossed this in my window. Hmm. Mind if I keep it? Help yourself, Rogers. All set, right? You better get my bag and get the car and put it back in my room. We're not leaving after all. Huh? Oh. It's all right, boys. Go ahead. What's the matter, fellas? Something wrong? Now take it easy. You took a shot at the sheriff and ran away. I didn't shoot at the sheriff, Roy. Those shots were meant for me, whether you believe it or not. One of them got me in the arm. I had to make you get away to save my life. If I'd have been doing this, I wouldn't have shot myself, would I? If I wanted to get away, I wouldn't have come back here. Who shot you? Of course, naturally. It couldn't have been him. He was standing not over 20 feet from me when the shots were fired. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Well, I don't get it. Neither do I, but I'm going to find out. Wait. Maybe this will help. Here's the slug I dug out of my arm. I'll keep this. Well, what about me? Take it easy. I'll have somebody look after that arm. Betty, you 
you don't think I'm too much of a heel, I won't apologize for this afternoon. Why? I was wrong about your dad. You better get some bandages and go back to the stall where Trigger is. He's there. Hey, Buster. I got something I want to tell you. Come on. Hey, Buster. See that guy with gloves? Yeah, his name's Ferguson. How long's he been around here? Born here as far as I know. Hey, you don't think he could have shot Weston? Anybody could have done it. Well, he happens to be on Goss's team, and anybody that's a friend of his is sure no friend of Weston. We've got to figure a way to get a fired slug from his gun. I want to compare it with this one. Well, I told you to stay out of here. Oh, did you? I guess I wasn't listening. Well, you're listening now. Get out of here before you're thrown out. You haven't your gang with you this time. I wouldn't talk rough to him, Mr. Ferguson. He's a gunfighter. Gunfighter, huh? <laughs> well, you two to one, I can outshoot anyone around here. You got a bet, cowboy. Just 20 says you can. I'll hold the money. I'll take some of that easy money. Here's 10 bucks that says Ferguson can beat you. Oh, but you're going to be sorry. Now I'll take five. What's the name of the horse? How about that barrel down there? What about the side of the building? I mean the plug. All right with me. Oh, 
cut it, Pete. You look unlucky. We are, 100%. Say, Pedro, that's quite a weapon you got there. A little dangerous, though, isn't it? No, see, I'll show you. <laughs> That don't count. Something slipped there. I see. <laughs> Say, was the sheriff still in town when you left? down there. Looks like the wreckage of an old wagon. It sure does. Roy, do you suppose that could be the lost wagon? Could be. It could have come this way, hit the same sharp curve and gone over just like Pete did a few minutes ago. We hit the jackpot. It hasn't been touched yet. Even the seal's unbroken. Let's break it open and see what's inside. Never mind. We'll leave it just like it is. Don't you want to make sure the money's in there? Not now. I've got a pretty good idea of what's in there. This is neither the time or the place to open it. Come on, we're heading back. all this, Joe. Search me. Sounds interesting, though. Going over to see what it's all about? You might as well. I think it's just a plain enough to get a bigger crowd at this show. What do you suppose he's trying to pull? I don't know. Somebody said Rogers found that strong box. Hi, Rogers. Howdy. Looks like you stirred up some excitement. Well, I figured the town could use a little. Hey, you mind telling the guy what you got up your sleeve? For a buck? Sure. You really going to spill something up there tonight? Why don't you come up and see the show? I may take you up on that. What does he mean, real culprit? Everybody knows Weston's guilty. Rogers doesn't seem to think so. Well, I think Rogers is crazy. Yeah, crazy as a fox. That stunt's going to fill the show book a dollar ahead. <laughs> sure. You know the routine? Yeah, I got it. I'm not going to let you down, folks. The strong box which was stolen here five years ago has just been recovered. Acting in the interest of my insurance company, I've taken possession of it. I'll give you my reason for this later. But just to satisfy your curiosity and put the sheriff's mind at ease, I want to announce that the strong box is right here on this stage. After the professor finishes his act, I'm going to ask the sheriff and the committee to come up here and open the box in plain sight. And I believe what we find inside the box will be the surprise I promised you.
search him, Buster. You know what these are, Sheriff? Sure. They're bullets. What of it? I'll explain that in a minute. But before I do, I suggest you arrest this man for stealing the money in the payroll box. Don't listen to him, Sheriff. He's trying to put over a fast one for his company. Can you back up this charge, Rogers? Sure. Open the box. All right, put it over here. Yeah, Sheriff. Is this better? Yeah. While you're doing it, you might notice that the express company seal is still intact. Why, it's empty. Just as I figured. Funny part about it, Sheriff, there never was any money in that box. Lucas made away with it before it was ever put into the wagon. And he staged the hold up to cover up. Incidentally, Goss, this is the man that shot you in the back, not Weston. Well, I'll be. For a while, I figured you did it. I even thought Ferguson had a hand in it. That's why I wanted to compare the bullets that hit Weston with the one from your gun, Ferguson. Obviously, the comparison was never made because we just found the bullets on Lucas. I guess he opened the package and substituted his own samples. You can't prove anything with those slugs. You mind letting me take a look at those bullets, Rogers? Don't anybody move. Oh, 